Hello there. Welcome back to Medicine for These Times. Quick reminder, if you're enjoying this podcast, please leave a review. I'd greatly appreciate it. Today, I want to do a quick little episode to share messages from the spirit of my dead father. (laughs) Figured you would enjoy that. Um, My father passed away about 18 years ago this July. I think it's been 18 years. I actually quit counting, but it's been a while. Uh, He passed away prematurely and it had a, a very big impact on my life. And I do believe on some level, my work with the medicine and the different mystical experiences I've had have come through this lineage of my dad's side. There was a lot I found out after he died about him and about others in my family to realize that he kind of walked this mystical path, even though he never shared anything about it with me. Very rarely, once in a while. But anyways, the message that my dad wants to give you (laughs) is this message about patience. So I am a double fire sign and I have a lot of energy. And when I was a little kid, I don't remember why, but my father would say this to me all the time. He would just say, patience, patience, patience. And he would always have this, this hand movement of like moving energy, like calming the energy down. I'm sure part of it was that he was a father and was just like, oh my God, give me a break. (laughs) Kids running around. But, you know, I think there was, there was this part of me, like many of us and lots of our society and our programming there was always in a hurry to get somewhere or get something or um, try to create something when in the end, it just takes patience. And it's been a very big lesson for my life to learn how to slow down. And what I've been witnessing in this world that seems to get faster and faster every day is the magic and beauty in slowing down and really allowing that patience to just be part of life and being okay with it and not to sit back and not do anything at all, but to find this balance point of how do you go about living your life and creating your dreams and making these dreams real and for into fruition and reality. How do you go about this life of always trying to get somewhere and create something and achieve something and do something while also bringing in a certain amount of patience and slowness and simplicity. And this is something that's been a huge journey for myself. I recently was on a four and a half day silent retreat or something like that, about four days. And of course, by the time I really dropped in, I could have used another five to 10 days. It's always hard to go on meditation retreats like this or honestly on every kind of retreat and take this time out for ourselves because so many of us, and I'm speaking to myself, of course, have this programming that believes we need to be doing things or taking care of things or finishing things or crossing things off of the list or you know, maybe it's missing out on things like... You might look at other people on social media or the internet or even on this podcast and think, wow, I wish I was doing that. Or, wow, that person has done so much. I need to do that too. Or I need to be famous like my friend who has a few hundred thousand followers or that influencer that I follow. This world is just designed to keep us constantly in this rat race of just moving at a pace that our bodies and our nervous systems and really our spirits can't, is is not designed to handle. Um, Even with this double fire sign with the Capricorn rising, I can handle a lot. And I realized that many years ago is that I can take on a lot more than some other people. And what I have witnessed in my experience, especially as I've been really working to reprogram myself, is that actually the slower I move and the more grounded energy I come from when I move and when I create and when I put something out there into the the reality of this world, the better it is, the easier it is, the more it flows and the more it just tends to open up other doorways into 
the magic space into what we might call those the magical synchronicities and signs and golden nuggets on this path of your soul. So when I took this four day um, silent retreat the other day, of course, I, I kept thinking of canceling it because I had so much to do and so much going on and then I'm going away soon. But I knew that that was probably a reason why I needed to do the retreat. Of course, when they, you know, open up the retreat before we fell into silence, I said, look, I wanted to cancel, which meant that I actually needed to do this more. <laughs> you know, they say if you're too busy to meditate, that means you need to meditate more. And I'm sure some of you are listening to that saying, oh my God, that's so me. I always put off my meditation because I think I need to be doing something or I need more sleep or you get distracted by something. What came up for me big time on this silent retreat was this world of distraction and how we are being distracted by every distraction. And then the distracted are actually distracting more people. And we now have professional distractors and everything is literally designed to distract us and make us go faster and to bring us into the, the, the speed and the anxiety and this, this energy of like constantly moving and going, which is why so many people are falling into depression and anxiety and frying their nervous systems and having, you know, like health issues multiple sicknesses, I could go on and on. And not to say this is everybody. Of course, there's many of you that are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But it's just kind of the the gist of what's going on here in the Western world. It's like I am around, let's say, my nephews or some teenagers these days. And it's just incredible how many are just glued to their phone or glued to a computer to the point where it's like, my question is, what are we all running from? What is everybody being distracted by? And what is it that they're actually avoiding? And this kind of goes hand in hand with this other realm of just moving so fast and trying to get to the next thing. I, I get this with clients a lot who are, you know, once in a while I have a client that's like, oh my God, I need clients or I need to make money or I I'm throwing like 20, you know, videos out there at once and nothing's landing. What's going on? And there's just kind of this energy of like trying to get something, get somewhere and, and rushing and needing and wanting and craving. And, you know, it seems very counterintuitive to actually suggest to my clients like, you know what, maybe try doing less, try slowing it down, taking it down a notch and actually like really embodying the energy of who you are in the world, who you be, how you show up, what you're here to do, how you're here to help people and like ground into that and radiate your heart energy out. Try doing that first and foremost before you go doing all the things. There's no reason, and I, I constantly talk about this. If you're new to my work, I've been saying this for years. There's really no reason to be spewing out a whole bunch of marketing or social media or posts or emails or content or videos or whatever it is if it's not really coming from the right energy and not really grounded and rooted in who you're really being. And this is where I am just so grateful to the message from my father when I was a kid about patience you know, patience. It's not like my dad was lazy and not doing anything. It was just, you know, he had a certain level of knowing that there's no reason to just constantly be in the future, in the anxiety, in the rushing, in the going, going, going. So this is the message I wanted to um, bring to you today was to have you just start to look at this and start to see, you know, if this way is not working for you, then maybe there's another way. You know, I remember many years ago, my life got to the point where I could feel that all I was doing, all this like next thing and the next thing and the, you know, trying and the pushing and the going, I was like, well, okay, it's working to a point, but it's not working in the way that I thought it would. It's not giving me the level of results that I thought it would because I equated this busyness and this going and this pushing and the, the, the like constant moving energy with 
results, with achievement, with creation, with reaching goals. And there was just this moment where I realized like, well, wait a second, if I haven't tried it the opposite way, how will I ever know if this is the way? You know, like what happens is we're programmed to believe this one perspective of life and how life works. For example, a friend of mine recently came to me saying, hey, how do I get more sales for this item I'm selling? I need to make more money. And it was really interesting because there's that part of me, it's like, yeah, there's a lot you could do. And what makes you believe that that is the way to make money? <laughs> and this is where there's like this counterintuitive question of like, where is it that we are, are programmed to believe that selling this item is your only way of, you know, calling in money? There are many ways that money can come to you and can manifest, and it doesn't necessarily have to be through just your work. It can be done in other ways. It's also a very energetic relationship. And if you start to test this out for yourself, and very often when clients of mine are like, you know, like, hey, I need clients, or I really want this to work, or I want to fill my program, or whatever it is, you know, it's always a balance of the masculine and the feminine. It's never just like, okay, now go market the hell out of this for three months until it fills. It's like, yes, market it to the point where it feels really aligned and feels true to you and feels good. And it's coming from aligned and inspired energy, inspired action. And you have to really do this deeper work to be in the energy of knowing like, okay, I am here to serve with my offering, with my program. And if I am meant to help people, then please show me how, you know, please help me, please guide me. You know, it's like a constant prayer, but you have to also work on your heart, your own energetic channels and like really tune into why you're doing this. What are you here for? Like feel the connection to working with your clients, to having a program filled, to the kind of soulmate people you're working with. Like, and then watch your mind. You know, the one thing I see constantly too is people going to, let's say, I want to fill this program and launch this thing. But then there's this voice in the back of their head that maybe believes it's too expensive or no one's going to want it or it's the wrong time of year or who, who am I to do this, or I'm not good enough, like whatever that voice is. And there's usually more than one voice. So this is where the key to all of that is slowing down. You know, it's very hard to listen to those subtle voices that might not even be conscious when you're just going, 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 or when your mind is on to the next thing, or when you're trying to just create and churn things out. What happens is you don't leave any space. You don't leave any room for that, that divine voice of, of like the subtle energies to come in. And this is where I really encourage all of you, and I'm going to share this with my clients as well, is to actually do these tests for yourself. You know, look at your life and say, okay, this is how I've been operating and it's only worked to this level. So what if I tried the opposite? And by the way, this also goes for those that are being too slow. There are some people once in a while who are actually just, you know, like polarized to the opposite spectrum. So much of our world is just moving so fast and constantly distracted and busy, busy, busy. And then there are some people that are the polar opposite. Maybe they are, um, you know, so slow that they're actually just not doing anything or they're completely disengaged with the world altogether. You know, it's kind of like, I, I don't really believe the answer to being here on this world is to dissociate from what's happening. And that means dissociate in either direction, going too slow and checking out completely or going too fast and being constantly glued to whatever it is, distraction. Do you see how they're, they're one and the same? So really, if you come to this balance point, which is really the key to everything, especially, you know, this, this soul alignment and the place of being in the divine and the divine flow and the divine channel is this balance point of the masculine and the feminine at work. You know, this is ancient wisdom. This is not just, you know, hoopla that you're hearing on Instagram. 
this is uh, Chinese medicine in a nutshell, right? It's like bringing everything in a balance will will bring you to this better place. And if you've never really given this a true try in your work, in your business, in your way of life, give it a try. You know, do it as an experiment and see how it goes and just test it out for yourself and see, pay attention to how your reality changes. You know, um, I have been very good at being experimental. And I remember the day where I was preparing for a workshop and typically I would, you know, go over the notes and maybe even do a run through and practice. And there was this one day where I decided, you know what, instead of going over all these notes, I'm going to actually just meditate. (laughs) Like I'm going to do the opposite because I knew I I only had so much time to prepare for this workshop. So the choice was to do more work, like busy it up, fill it up, you know, like get it into my mind or to clear my mind and empty it out. And that was when I was like, oh, wow, that was one of the best workshops I ever delivered. Let me try that again. So this is the message for you from my father during this time of the year where we love to recognize our fathers. I would love to also take this moment to acknowledge that you know, losing him at this kind of premature age during my Saturn return, no less, <laughs> one of the most challenging periods in your late 20s and early 30s. It was such a gift. I mean, it was definitely one of the hardest experiences of my life. But looking back, it really guided me on a path to living my true purpose and to really question what life was all about. You know, when you witness someone close to you that you love dearly, pass away maybe 20 years early or, you know, even 15 years early, it really makes you stop to question like, what is life all about? And why are we here to do it? You know, watch my dad go from working his whole life to only being retired for just a few years and then kind of dying quickly. You know, there was that part of me that that realized like, wait, are we really living life to just retire and die and that's it? And by the time you retire, it's like, then what? Like, you're too tired to travel. You're too tired to do the things you wanted to do. Um, That was kind of like my dad. He got to retirement and was like, I don't even want to (laughs) travel. You know, so then it's like, okay. I mean, everybody to each their own. But I remember it really waking up so much inside of me. And having that experience touch me so deeply has been such a guiding force. And, you know, like a lot of these wisdom traditions, they look to the impermanence and this this fact that we die as one of our greatest teachers. You know, the more you can really get in touch with death, the more you realize like you only live here once and how much you you only have, you know, this this set amount of time to really live life as fully as you desire. So... I encourage you to really check in with yourself. For those of you who've lost a parent or a father during this time, I feel you. But, you know, this is an opportunity to turn this into a gift and a teacher. And if you're sitting on the fence waiting to live your purpose or follow your dreams or go after something you really want, take this message as time to maybe give it a little experiment and give it a try and just see what happens please let me know how it goes. And this is a call for all psychedelic fathers, any father that's walking the medicine path and hopefully with great reverence and gratitude and, um, you know, skillfulness. Thank you for your beautiful work, raising children in the world, being a good father, and hopefully creating a, a really Um, heart-centered future generation. So I have hope for all of us. And I just want to take this moment to acknowledge you fathers and all of our dads. Thank you so much. Lots of love.